So mom or dad are going to be moving into a new senior living community. And the hardest part is over. Or so you think. The best thing that we can do now once we've made that decision as a family is to make a plan for the actual move itself. So one of the things that we want to talk about today on Lantern Rays is how to do that. I'm Carolyn Lookabill with Lantern Lifestyle, and this is Lantern Rays. Today our topic is how to help a senior parent move into a senior living community. Well, the first thing we want to do is take time. You want to make sure that you are going to give your parent enough time to deal with every item that they're going to be reviewing. You know, uh, each item has a purpose, but also each item has a memory. And if you were planning a quick move, maybe you have a corporate move or whatever, you could probably do it uh, super fast. Get the movers, get the boxes, make the decisions and make it happen. But when we're downsizing from our family home and a home that we've lived in for some time, it is more of an emotional move as much as it is a physical move. So that is what we have to plan for. Now, certainly involve your senior living community. They may have a moving coordinator. They may have some services that are part of incentives to help you move in, like even assistance with movers. They may have relationships with local movers. They may have discounts for trucks or boxes from a Home Depot or a big box store or another service in your community. They may also have relationships with other professionals whose business is to help seniors downsize their home. So certainly ask about those services. Then I would suggest that you involve mom and dad from the beginning. Don't determine that this is a project that you're going to take on and you're going to get them moved. Let them be a part of as many decisions as they can so that when that transition day comes and you're actually moving in, that they've been instrumental in making everything happen for that day. They'll be much more able to readily embrace that move. Now, your senior living community may have been working with you over time and they may have been doing a little virtual tours or videos for you. We even do customized videos where someone has chosen a particular suite and we will go back then and send videos to them of that particular suite so that they can envision how their love seat, how their club chair, how their bookcase is going to fit into a particular room. Now, not all senior communities are alike. Some have studios, some may have a one bedroom, a two bedroom, some have not only a living room, but a dining room or a library space. So the space that you're going to be moving into probably has a floor plan right along with it that the senior living community can provide. That floor plan is ideal for you because as you begin to pack, you can actually mark the items in your home with a sticker, a post-it note, an index card, however you wish to do it, and put a corresponding sticker onto the written for floor plan so that when the move actually happens, we know that this box goes in this room, this bookcase goes in that room, and so on and so forth. Now, because of the COVID restrictions that we've all been living under this last uh, year, let's say, uh, we may not be able to actually be moving in ourselves. You may have to use movers who then go to a loading dock or a maintenance area and everything will be dropped off so that the team at the senior living community will be delivering and installing all of the items that you bring. That's why it's very important for you to use a floor plan and use some kind of way to mark boxes and items so that they are readily going to be right where you need them to be. And then when mom and dad arrive, it's a little bit more put together and more un you know settling for them. They're going to settle in more readily. The other thing that's helpful for you then is to take that floor plan and begin to deal with one room at a time and find that corresponding room in mom and dad's house. So for instance, if you're moving the living room, take a look at the space that's available to you and then the furniture that's in the existing room and what you can uh, readily fit in there. You may not be able to bring that baby grand piano or that big roll top desk, but you may be able to bring their favorite chairs or love seat. Perhaps they have club chairs, recliner chairs, pieces of art, framed photographs. So take a look at what will actually fit into the space. When it comes to the kitchen, 
the kitchen is one of those items where in the in the family home they probably have all kinds of devices and pots and pans and sets of dinnerware all those kinds of things they typically are not needed in a senior living community if the meals are being provided and there are lots of activities that offer refreshments, your kitchen area may really be more for refreshments and snacks and perhaps having your favorite uh, coffee mug or cereal bowl, you know, that kind of thing, and some um, glassware, what have you. You really won't need full sets of dishes and pots and pans, you know, that kind of thing. So perfect time to downsize there. Now, when it comes to things like DVDs, CDs, art and craft supplies, woodworking supplies, things like that. You know, if those are part of your parents' um, personality, their hobbies, their interests, even if it's not today, but in years past, they really enjoyed those things, talk with the senior living community about whether or not their activity department would like to receive some of those items as a donation. That way your parent is bringing along with them things that have meaning, things that have memory, and uh, gives them a chance to share with some of their new neighbors. So that could be something that is a great and welcome addition to the senior living community, especially if they have collections like a jazz collection or a classical music collection, uh, or they have musical instruments, any of those things. See if you can uh, bring those along as a donation if it doesn't fit into the space that your mom and dad will be moving to. You want to take time then to allow mom and dad to tell you the story and the memory of the items that you are looking at. You know, it's not as simple as I said before of just putting items in boxes. Every item has a memory. And so they're going to want to talk about those memories, especially if some of these items are items they're going to be letting go of. And that's probably one of the hardest things about a move is letting go of items that we've held on to for years. Uh, some of us are pack rats, but some of us are just sentimental. And we've kept those Girl Scout uniforms and sports trophies and tons of photographs and yearbooks. Okay, we may or may not be able to bring all of those with us, but most certainly we can bring some of them. So what can we do with the things that um, we are not able to bring? Some families actually host a party and each person, a child, a grandchild who comes, uh, is given a number or a couple of numbers or a ticket and they're able to pick out particular items that mom and dad aren't going to be bringing with them. And that way they can hear the story of the item, they can get a little video of mom or dad talking about the item, or there might even be a note or a gift card that's been left for that item to tell the history of it. You might also find that um, this is a great time to bring in, if, especially if there are antiques and high-end items, bring in an antique dealer, bring in one of the companies that specializes in senior relocation, and they may help you be able to sell the items that you have at a good price. Uh, today, um, you may have an organization that's looking for donations of bigger items and furniture, and uh, it's not always the case, but you know, again, think about each item and what purpose they can continue to have after it would leave mom and dad's home. Uh, I know that some of the seniors that move into our communities actually will, as I said, attach a little note or a memory to an item. It could be a book, it could be a piece of art, could be a piece of jewelry. So those are items that can be then held to the side and given at holiday time or on a special occasion. You're saving something for a college graduation. You're saving something for granddaughter's wedding, you know, that kind of thing. So keep those items in mind. The other thing you want to think about then is, you know, having that plan, having a timeline, but a timeline that works for your parents as well as it will work for you. Remembering that each item has emotion to it and it may take your parents some time to make decisions that they're going to feel good about so they don't feel rushed or pushed into having to make this move more quickly than they would anticipate. So as those things are happening, put that plan on paper. See if you can enlist other family members. Maybe you've got some college students in the family uh, who can help you facilitate the actual move. You know, rent a big box store truck or a U-Haul or one of these uh, types of, you know, um, trucks that you can get readily. Maybe someone in the family has a pickup or a large van or an SUV and they can help with the move. And again, um, keep in mind that you may not be able to have the items moved in by you. You may be leaving them at a loading dock. So get as much help as you can to prepare for that. And uh, that way the retirement community staff will also be then able to uh, get those items just where you want them in the suite. And they can even send you photographs of movies after the move-in so that you're feeling comfortable with everything, especially today during COVID if you're not permitted to come into the building at first uh, visit. The thing you also want to do as part of the move is focus on the positive. Your parents have worked with you. They've made the decision to move into this particular community or new home. 
and they're leaving a lot of things behind. They're leaving behind perhaps their church friends, uh, stores that they went to, relationships at the library, particular neighbors, especially if they're moving from another city. About a third of the people who move into senior living are actually changing cities. They're coming closer to their adult children or grandchildren. And so they are leaving behind more than just their home and their furniture. They're leaving behind relationships. And so you want to focus on the relationships that they're going to make in their new community. One way to do this is to involve the marketing or sales director that you're working with. Once someone is touring, of course, we're sending them materials like brochures, we're doing virtual tours and videos. But once they're making that decision to move in, we often are doing a few FaceTimes so that they can get to know us and they can get to know about our community. They can ask all the questions they have. We can tell them about upcoming events. And we also send cards and little gifts a long time before the move so that on the day they arrive, whether we're meeting them at the car or we're meeting them at the front door, they're going to see a face that they've seen before. They can put a name with a face. They're going to be welcomed and they're going to be less nervous or apprehensive about that physical move itself. So that's something to keep in mind. Involve that staff at the senior living community as much as you can. You also then, in focusing on the positive, want to focus on the things that they didn't necessarily care about in their current home. They're going to be giving up yard work, all the lawn maintenance, home repair. They're not going to have to deal with cooking and housework and cleaning. They're going to have all those things provided for them so that their day can be spent enjoying the things that mean most to them. So if it's reading or hobbies or interest or church or socializing, they're going to have the energy and the time now to embrace that lifestyle that you've chosen together at the senior living community. You also want to then think about um, letting go of what you can. You know, as I said before, some of us hold on to items for sentimentality. And, you know, this is a time that we want to think about functionality as well as sentimentality. So bring along the photographs, bring along the photo books, bring along the um, items from military service, wedding photos, but, you know, think about the things that you don't necessarily need any longer. When we're thinking about clothing, you probably only need a two-week supply. You really do. Bath linens, bed linens, same thing. We don't need five sets of uh, bed spreads and eight sets of sheets and towels. You just don't need it. Your laundry is probably being done at the senior living community. So bring a two-week supply of those things. You definitely want to bring a one-month supply or more of toiletry items. And uh, some of the folks like to bring in those plastic containers that you can get at a Target or a Walmart, two or three drawers uh, that fit easily into a closet. They may fit in under a sink. Ikea has a lot of those storage types of products. So, you know, um, give some thought to what items are needed and what items could be stored easily. If your parents are not bringing a bed from the home, but purchasing a new bed, you may want to look at a platform bed that has drawers underneath it. So that gives you added storage. Most readily, you know, a twin bed, a hospital bed, a double bed, and a queen bed are going to fit pretty readily in your new environment. But when you get to the king size furniture, it may be a bit of a challenge. So measurements are important, functionality and comfort at the same time. You want to bring items again that are going to be easily transported. You know, if you're bringing a china cabinet, you're bringing a lot of glass collectibles and things like that, they need to be packaged safely. And one way you may package them is, of course, with professional moving supplies that you can get at any of the uh, places where you can rent, uh, you know, moving trucks. You may have uh, folks on your local um, little neighborhood, you know, Facebook pages that have recently moved and they're giving those away. But you may also find that, you know, just being practical, wrap items inside a, um, a dish towel or a bath towel or a sheet, you know, again, take advantage of, you know, the opportunity to minimize space. So I will say that for a lot of folks, bringing all those little uh, tchotchkes and collectibles can be a challenge for the housekeeping staff of your community. That community um, typically is going to provide a weekly housekeeping or even more. And when they're doing that, they're trying to do what is called a deep clean, where they're taking care of floors and counters and, you know, whatever needs to be done, including the bathroom. But having to dust around all these fine collectibles is a little bit of a challenge. So, you know, think about if you're going to bring those types of items, having them enclosed in a, you know, china cabinet or curio cabinet, something where they can remain contained and not be at risk of... Um, breakage. 
If you're going to be bringing any special equipment in, like a cane, a walker, a wheelchair, or a scooter, make sure those are all in good repair before you bring them. Sometimes we pick them up at a garage sale or a neighbor gifts them to us. We get them as a donation, and that's fine. But if you're bringing those items in, you want to make sure they're fitted properly to the person's body and size. You want to make sure they're all in good working order and there aren't any squeals or squeaks as they go down the corridor where they live. So, you know, take a few moments to make sure that that equipment is in good order. If you're bringing any appliances in, same thing. So if you've got favorite lamps in the home, but they've been there for a while, check that wiring. Perhaps they need to be rewired before they're brought in. It's not appropriate to bring in any extension cords to a senior living community. So you want to make sure any wiring that you have is appropriate and uh, safe, you know, for the person coming in. Same thing with if you're bringing in any bathroom appliances, electric toothbrush, hair dryer, electric razors, make sure they're in good working order. Make sure that you have, if you're going to need a number of those appliances, a uh, UL listed power strip so that that way we're, again, not using any extension cords of any type. This is the time that we're probably going to say when we're looking at the kitchen items, we don't need all those big items, as I said before. Give that grill away. Give away those, you know, master sets of holiday dishes and china. All those things are not going to be needed at the senior living community. Bring what makes your uh, parent feel most comfortable, which makes them feel settled. If they have favorite pillows or quilts and certain pieces of furniture that are, you know, part of their uh, comfort, Bring those along when you can, but think um, about the space. Think about the safety. You definitely don't want to bring in any throw rugs or items that are trip hazards in any way. So be sensitive to that. Now, some of the other things that we can think about as we're getting ready for that move are um, letting, when we say letting go of items, are these the items that you want to gift to other people in the family? Are there organizations that your parents are a part of that might like something that uh, your parents have? Maybe they have lawn and garden supplies. Maybe they have items that could go to a, a local auction. Um, in this area, as we do have in many states and the big cities, there are not-for-profit organizations that have house sales or uh, warehouse sales. I know we have quite a few in the greater Cleveland area. And so they will welcome that furniture being donated and collections of china and artwork because those um, items then can be sold or auctioned and that money then serves the purpose of the organization. Those are great things. Uh, going back to uh, the idea of how to help our parents most, it is knowing that you're gonna allow enough time for the move to happen in such a way that your parents can be involved in as many decisions as possible. You can also engage other family members to be a part of hearing the stories about the memories, helping with the physical move itself, helping with the selection of items, helping to make sure they're all safe and in good shape and good order, helping to pack items, and even helping with the physical move itself. As part of the move, you can also invite the neighbors and church friends where they live now to know their new address. You know, go ahead and reach out to the post office. Make sure the address has changed for your parents and invite all those friends and neighbors and people in their world to know where they're going to be moving, to have the correct address and go ahead and send along greeting cards. They can send a plant. They can send candy. Um, all those things are going to help make your parent feel more welcome in the community. Make sure that your parents then are also uh, able to help you know what is important. Don't get into a fight uh, or an argument or even a discussion, I'll leave it at that, over something that you don't think they need but is important to them. I'm going to give you an example that I've heard, a Victrola. We've had folks that said, I want to bring, bring this particular Victrola that's been part of my family. My father had this in our home when we grew up, and this is what I want to bring. And the adult child will say, well, no one even uses a Victrola. It's a great piece of furniture, Dad, but it doesn't seem practical. You won't have enough space for it. You're not really able to use it as a Victrola. Go ahead um, and let that mom and dad make the selection of the items that are important to them on an emotional level. As long as in the end, you're gonna be able to satisfy the floor plan requirements and make the pieces fit. There's nothing more difficult than having a family move mom or dad in and we're at the loading dock. We've given them the floor plans. We've helped them with measurements. We've done all the videos. And then when they arrive, there is so much furniture that they literally have half a truck that has to be returned because it simply will not fit. So. 
Anyway, I hope some of these tips have helped you today. The best ideas on helping a senior parent move are number one, get them engaged in the process. Understand that every item has a purpose and a memory and you wanna hear about those memories. You wanna make sure that you're gonna be aware of the timeline that's available to you and how you can make it work to your advantage. You wanna have a plan and involve any resources that you can, perhaps provided by the senior living community or available as a professional service in your particular area. And then you wanna go ahead and pack what is needed and what is valued and bring those items along and get ready for a fresh new beginning at the senior living community you've chosen. Thanks so much for listening. We hope you'll continue to tune in to Lantern Rays, which is a weekly program of Lantern Lifestyle. And thanks for joining us today. Till next time, we send our best to you for today and always.